Hello and welcome to this video. Um, <coughs> a nature colouring job. I'm not going to do any colour on this. A piece of um, what I'm told is sycamore burr or burl, depending which side of the Atlantic you hail from. Um, it's got very thick bark. I mean, I'd be tempted normally, I think, to make this the top. Um, but the bark is really, really very thick. I'm not really sure that would would look well on a thin rim. I could be wrong. I've got a couple of other pieces. Um, the inside, wonderful dark wood in the centre. I'm thinking of making this the top, keeping a natural edge, even this rather large lumpy bit out here, uh, turning a bowl in the middle and just giving myself an area for standing on a foot, uh, either by taking some of the bark away and standing it on its on the wood that's exposed or making a separate foot for it um, to sit on. I think that'd be quite an attractive bold top. So that's the idea. So I'll get a face plate on here, get something turned on the bottom uh, to mount it on and possibly to stand it on, but that can be decided later and then turn the inside out. Okay, let's get cracking. Right, so now the job is to find the center of the bowl for where the faceplate is going to go. Um, obviously I've got a longer distance here than here. Um, I've also got to think about underneath the bowl as well. Um, it, it goes quite a way, it's quite thin this part. Um, so that's going to limit as well the depth or the, the angle that I can put the bowl in because I don't want to break out the side. Uh, Going to put it there. Just a bit worried about the gap under there. Let's just measure this distance. 13, 13, just about. So we're going to have an opening in the middle of about 21, 22 centimeters we can get away with. 23 maybe. Yeah, we should be able to get away with about 23 centimetres. Which in real money is about nine inches. <clears throat> I don't know how many of, of you got into woodwork through Norm Abram, the new Yankee workshop. But that was certainly a big influence on me. And uh, this was one of, one of the things I bought under Norm's influence. Um, a drill and combined uh, screwdriver head called a jack rabbit rabbit had to come all the way from America I know I could probably find things like this in England but um oh well there you go that's what you do when you're under the influence of a guru okay now this is quite recently felled and it's quite a weight and it's not going to be very balanced as we can see it's a lot heavier on this end than this end now my idea is to flatten some of this off to make some room before I even put power to the lathe I'm turning the speed right down on my speed control on the little speed control box that I made um, as a breakout from the inverter housing panel. So I've got that right next to me and uh, if I've got my hands full I can just lean into that stop button with my hip and uh, everything will stop and all, all will be well. I'm going to actually adjust the position of the face plate.
Now I want the foot to be having the best grip possible. So that means getting it as close to 100 as possible. That's about 106, where it was soft around here before. That's gone. That's pretty solid wood, although it's very wet because it's freshly felled. In terms of the depth I've got here, that's 15 millimetres to that point. So I can shave a couple of millimetres off, uh, dovetail it, and then I'm going to flatten off this part. Well, that just shows that working with wet burr timber is interesting. I've just taken the faceplate off and this little piece detached itself. Um, not seen anything like that before. Right, proceed with caution. Just want to give myself an idea of where to turn. Now I'm keeping the centre in, uh, mainly to help give it some structural integrity while I turn the bowl out. Some of you, some of you may have invested in some of these carbide cutting tools. Uh, I'll put a link onto where I got mine from. Where are you? Uh, for sort of clearing of wood, I find them quite useful. But um, if uh, if you're thinking of investing in one of these. You really have to use them right on centre. I think I'm probably, probably there. I'll just give it a go and you can see what they cut like. Where they are help useful is because it's a circular cutter, you can cut on this edge, the end, the left hand edge. And these are also useful for putting an undercut on so that the rim is just slightly smaller than the circumference of the bowl. And that's helpful when you're getting things out with your hand. Okay, I think I've got a reasonable curve going on in there. Right, I'm going to be using chestnut finishing oil. Got a little brush for putting it on in some of the areas where using a piece of kitchen roll might prove problematic. Get quite a bit on the pad. Start wiping it in. 
Oh, wow, that's really, really putting a lovely finish on. The sanding did take quite a while. This spot here and this spot here, the grain is just so soft and punky. It's, uh, I'm hoping the oil will maybe harden it up a little. Now here, I thought I'd just left lots of little marks, but that's actually a pattern in the grain. Now I was doubtful about this piece round here, but in a way I think it's kind of balanced. Ooh. Is it just me, or can anyone else see a snail? Snail shell, little funny bit at the back, a head, or maybe a, maybe a turtle. A stylized turtle of some sort. Okay, now we'll leave that a few hours before I put another coat on. I'm pleased with that. And while okay, I well, here's the finished bowl. Uh, a slab bowl, I'm calling it, because it's cut from a slab. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to make some three buttons, I think, maybe out of a bit of purple heart to just put in the base so that it's elevated a little bit from the table. And if there is any movement in it because it's wet, still drying out, it will um, help balance it. Um, I think I'm going to call it my turtle sycamore burr bowl or a sycamore burtle bowl. Oh, that's a dreadful pun. Anyway, the close ups I hope are giving you a really nice idea of the beauty in the wood. Um, and I think this would be a lovely feature on anyone's table. Um, although my family have said I'm not allowed to give it away to anyone. I might sell it though, if the price is right. Thanks for watching. This has got me thinking. Hmm.